What is up, folks? How's it going? This is Watt for MW Technology. Hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're going to be doing a direct head to head comparison between the MacBook Pro powered by the M4 Pro chip versus my MacBook Air powered by the M3 chip. Now, obviously, Apple has not updated the MacBook Air lineup. That's probably going to come later down the road with M4 chip compatibility. But I just wanted to see how the standard MacBook Air compared against the MacBook Pro powered by the more powerful processor. Now, we don't have obviously the standard. Standard M4 chip on our MacBook Pro, but we do have a Mac Mini powered by the standard M4 chip. So we're actually going to do a, basically a three-year comparison between the M3, the M4, as well as the M4 Pro in terms of our benchmark results. But comparing the two laptops, we're going to take a look at core differences in terms of ports and connectivity options, display, as well as the new camera, battery life, and everything like that to determine whether it's actually worth paying almost double the price for an M4 Pro powered MacBook Pro versus the standard M3 MacBook Air. So let's get into it. Now, first thing I want to talk about the size and overall dimensions of both MacBooks. Now, in terms of the footprint, they're quite similar, even though that the MacBook Pro has a slightly larger display size of 14.2 inches versus 13.6 inches on the Air, but the Air is still significantly thinner and lighter at 11.1 three millimeters in terms of thickness and 1.25 kilograms in terms of weight versus the pros about 15.5 millimeters in terms of thickness and about 1.6 kilograms in terms of weight now the big reason to get a macbook pro is the ports and connectivity options we have three thunderbolt 5 ports as well as a full-size hdmi sd card reader headphone jack and a magsafe power connection now the one reason to get the m4 pro chip is that it comes with thunderbolt 5 connectivity which is up to 120 gigabits a second versus the standard m4 chip and indeed the m3 chip or thunderbolt 4 compliant which is up to 40 gigabits a second now on the macbook air we're a lot more limited in terms of ports and connectivity you only have two thunderbolt 4 connections as well as a headphone jack and magsafe power connection now, if you're interested in using external monitors, the M4 Pro has the ability to use the built-in display alongside two external 6K displays at 60 Hertz refresh rate using the Thunderbolt 5 interface. And on the M3, you can either use the built-in display as well as one external 6K monitor at 60 Hertz refresh rate, or if you close the lid, you can add a secondary 5K monitor at 60 Hertz refresh rate. Now, moving forward, let's actually talk about the built-in displays. now. On the Pro version of the MacBook, you do definitely get a more advanced display. It's using the micro LED backlight technology, which has local dimming capabilities to give you exceptional brightness and black levels, up to a thousand nits sustained full screen brightness and in hdr mode you're looking at up to 1600 nits peak brightness versus on the standard liquid retina display on the macbook air you're looking at uh, peak brightness up to 500 nits on top of that the native resolution is also quite a bit higher at 3024 by 1964 on the pro versus 2560 by 1664 on the macbook air and perhaps even more importantly the refresh rate is up to 120 hertz on the Pro versus 60 Hertz on the air. Another big advantage is the actual built-in speakers. We have six high fidelity speakers with force canceling woofers built into the Pro. They sound a lot louder, more deeper in terms of bass response, and just generally better to listen to for music, movies or whatever content you're consuming now you do get four speakers that have spatial audio capabilities on the macbook air the speaker quality is definitely quite a lot lower than what we encounter with the pro but utilitary nonetheless Okay, so what you're looking at is the M3 MacBook Air recording with the front-facing camera at 1080p. And here we switch over to the M4 MacBook Pro. And you can see in terms of general quality, they're quite similar. But we do have a 12 megapixel camera sensor on the new MacBook Pro. In addition to that, we also have uh, the ability to do a desk view. So you could actually share your workspaces. And since the uh, camera itself records quite a wide field of view, you can actually change and, and set it up. So whatever's on your desk, you can share. So if we hit share right there, you can see what I have on my desk. And this works uh, at the same time when you're doing a video call. So this is a pretty cool dual camera setup within one camera. Desk view is obviously not available on the current generation MacBook Airs and is exclusive to the Pro right now. Okay, so let's get into the specification difference between the chips that power these laptops. So the 
M4 Pro comes with a 12 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, and on the M3 base model, you get an 8 core CPU and an 8 core GPU. On the standard M4 chip, that's available on uh, our Mac Mini, as well as the standard MacBook Pro. That's a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU. Now all these chips are still three nanometers, but the second generation of the three nanometer process has been optimized and Apple has claimed that they've improved both performance and power efficiency on the M4 SoC. On top of that, as we'll see from our benchmark results, you definitely encounter faster CPU and GPU performance, but also the neural engine should be significantly improved for better ML processing, which we'll test out in our AI benchmarks later on. But in terms of RAM configuration, you're looking at 24 gigabytes on the M4 Pro version of the MacBook Pro. It's LPDDR5 certified, and we also have a higher memory bandwidth of 273 gigabytes a second versus on the M3, we have 16 gigabytes of RAM with a lower memory bandwidth of 100 gigabytes a second. On the standard M4, you're looking at 16 gigabytes of RAM as well on the base model with a slight bump in memory bandwidth up to 120 gigabytes a second. In terms of long-term storage, the base model of the M3 MacBook Air comes with 256 gigabytes, which we have over here, and can go up to two terabytes if you configure it. The MacBook Pro either comes with a 512 and two terabyte SSD. And if you get the M4 Pro version, you can upgrade to four terabytes. And if you get the M4 Max, which is the top end, you can get up to eight terabytes of long-term storage. Now with the specs aside, let's actually take a look at our benchmark performance results. We'll first start with some machine learning benchmarks from the Geekbench AI suite. This is basically going to take our CPU, GPU, as well as neural engine and test out how accurate each system is in terms of three different scores based on how large the data set is off of a single point precision or 32-bit large data set a half precision medium 16-bit data set and a quantized score or 8-bit low data set and generally speaking the higher the score is the better and more precise the machine learning or ai capabilities are now, first, we're going to graph out the CPU benchmark results. So this is basically testing out how accurate the CPU is in terms of ML processing capabilities. As you can see, the M4 and M4 Pro are about twice the performance of the standard M3 chip found on our MacBook Air. And the M4 Pro is just slightly ahead of the M4 chip, but not by a significant margin, basically getting a slightly higher data set score on single and half precision parameters. Now, next, we're going to graph out the results for our GPU tests for ML processing. As you can see, we're getting uh, much significantly higher results on all three platforms, but still an edge up on the M4 Pro and standard M4 model compared to the standard M3 chip. And lastly, we can graph out the neural engine results. And as you can see here, the neural engine is really optimized for quantized data sets, so low amount of data with relatively high precision levels. We still have a similar trend where the M4 and M4 Pro have the edge up, but not by a significant margin. I think the M3 is going to be more than capable enough to handle most prompt uh, services such as ChatGPT, not to mention the capabilities of Apple intelligence fairly snappily and responsively without a major difference that the end user would ultimately experience from a consumer perspective. But if you're going to be developing on a machine learning platform or uh, create your own AI tools, the M4 and M4 Pro definitely have an edge up in terms of that perspective. Now, moving forward and take a look at the standard Geekbench results, which is just going to test out our CPU based on multi core and single core performance. You can obviously see that the M4 Pro is significantly faster of getting over 20,000 points on the multi-core and 3,600 points on the single core versus on the standard M4 chip, you're looking at 15,000 multi-core, 3,800 single core. And on the M3 chip, you're looking at about 11,000 multi-core and 3,000 single core. Moving forward and take a look at the GPU performance on metal. Now we do have a much faster GPU on the M4 Pro chip with the 16 core. So we're getting over 100,000 points on the uh, Geekbench Metal versus about 57,000 points on the standard M4 chip and 40,000 points on the M3 chip. Now that's uh, the GPU performance in Metal, but how is it in terms of OpenGL? Well, using Unigine's Valley Benchmark, 1080 resolution at ultra detail settings, we're getting 120 average frames per second on the M4 Pro versus 99 average frames per second on the standard M4 and 59 frames per second on the M3. 
Moving forward and taking a look at the SSD performance on all these devices, on the M4 Pro chip, it actually has a much faster SSD with a higher capacity of 512 gigabytes on the base model. And we're getting about 5,800 and 4,400 read and write sequential speeds, respectively, in amorphous Dismark. And in the same exact scenario, on the standard M4 chip, we're getting about 3,000 and 2,000 read and write, respectively. And the SSD found on the M3 MacBook Air is about half the read and write performance as we find on the M4 Pro. Furthermore, the most important thing that I want to know from these computers is how they actually encode and export video footage. Now, I actually do this pretty much on a daily basis, so this is pretty important to me. So I took four raw clips out of my camera and uh, put them into Handbrake and encoded them at 4K60 fast HEVC codec, and it took about 19 minutes, 50 seconds to complete that queue on the M4 Pro MacBook Pro, and on the M4 chip, it took about 26 minutes, 20 seconds, and the same exact thing took over 32 minutes to complete on the M3 MacBook Air. After that, I went into Premiere Pro and exported a 10-minute project using the YouTube 4K60 H.264 preset in Adobe Encoder, and that took about 9 minutes, 43 seconds to complete that export on the M4 Pro. On the standard M4, it took about 10 minutes, 9 seconds, so not that much slower. And on the standard M3 chip, it took 11 minutes and 24 seconds. Now, granted, if I were to use it Final Cut, I could probably significantly half the time of my export times, but I'm a Premiere Pro user. And given these results over here, I think the M3 is actually doing quite well, considering the price point is uh, about half as much as the M4 MacBook Pro. So if you're going to be using Premiere Pro and expecting a big performance bump on the export times, this is certainly not the case thus far. Last but not least, let's talk about battery life. Now, in terms of the capacity itself on the M3 MacBook Air, you're using a 52.6 watt hour lithium polymer battery versus 72.4 watt hour battery on the MacBook Pro. Apple claims that you can get up to 22 hours of video streaming on the MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro chip. On the standard M4 chip, it's actually a little bit more power efficient, so you can get up to 24 hours of video streaming. So I actually wanted to put that through the test. I tested out the M3 MacBook Air in our video playback test, and it scored about 19 hours and four minutes in airplane mode, just playing a 1080p video on loop. And on the uh, MacBook Pro M4 Pro version, using the exact same scenario, we got a total runtime of about 23 hours and eight minutes. Extremely impressive, probably the most amount of battery life I've ever encountered on any laptop. But really on that guys, that's really it. For me personally, I think the M3 is an excellent value proposition. It pretty much offers 90% of the experience of the MacBook Pro, but at a much significant reduced cost. In fact, almost half the cost. And uh, even for me that renders out HDR 4K video at higher frame rates, it does take a little bit of time to export, but if you have some time, you could just wait it out and it's not that big of a deal. But if you really need to optimize that workflow and uh, want to get a faster computer, the M4 Pro variant of the MacBook Pro is super impressive. Extremely fast GPU, extremely fast CPU with excellent ports and connectivity options, better display, camera, and probably the best battery life we've ever encountered on any laptop. But definitely love to know what you guys think. If you had the choice between a MacBook Air and a MacBook Pro, which one would you get? Do you think it's worth waiting for the MacBook Air powered by the M4 chip? I definitely think so. And if you have any specific questions, definitely let me know. Please give us a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Have post notifications turn on. And if you're interested in Mac gaming, we actually did a video between two of our Mac minis powered by the M4 and M4 Pro chip. And we ran through a whole bunch of different games. And I think Mac gaming is back. And definitely check out that video if you haven't done so already. We'll see you real soon in the next one and take care. Bye-bye.